and welcome to another episode of RN Cliff Notes. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. And what are we doing? Helping students see through larger concepts. All right, I'm Cliff Davis, uh, Associate Dean of Nursing and a longtime advanced medical surgical professor. Okay, let's jump right in. Acid base imbalances and ABG interpretation. ABG, arterial blood gas. All right, pH, one of the very first things we need to know right off the bat. pH, well, the actual meaning of pH, the, the jury's out on it. However, one way to think about it is the percentile of hydrogen. You'll realize that when we start to speak of uh, acids inside your body, they tend to start with hydrogen, right? So uh, let's just try it out. So what kind of acids inside of your stomach? And it is, you guessed it, right? What? Hydrochloric acid. So if we abbreviate that, it would be HCl, hydrochloric acid. So again, percentile of what? Hydrogen, that H. We see it with our body acids. Okay, so the pH scale measures the degree to which a substance is acidic or basic. And notice something. We can say basic or we could say alkaline. Those words are interchangeable, right? Uh, but for a lot of the purposes of this right here, we're going to be using the word alkaline. So, the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. And if you remember from our first video in this series, right? 7 is one of our magic numbers. And why? It appears here again. And 7 is the neutral point in the pH scale. Good to know. Alright, so, bouncing off that 7 concept... We've got, if a pH is greater than 7, we're going to call it alkaline. And we said the other word was what for alkaline just a minute ago? Base or basic. Yeah. All right. And then less than 7 is acidic. Here's a way to help you remember that. You want to think of the concept of acid rain falling. Acid rain falling. And falling would be what? Lower than the number 7. So yeah, less than 7, acidic. All right. And we move on. Now, here's just a, a quick overview of how acidic some things are. So way over here on the side, right, uh, approaching the lowest point, we have a picture of your stomach. And we just said what kind of acid was in there? Hydrochloric acid. That stuff is super, super strong and burns the things that it touches. So, right, a uh, fine example of that, just as a, a, a quick little knowledge tidbit, if you studied about patients who were suffering from anorexia, bulimia, right? And they're making themselves regurgitate their food up or vomit their food up. When they do that too much, the uh, hydrochloric acid from their stomach will actually eat away at the enamel in their teeth. And that, that's one of your actual signs to let you know that that could be going on. Not just that they have an emaciated appearance, but that their stomach acid is eating away at the enamel in their teeth. Yeah? Okay, other things, uh, soda. If you haven't seen it yet, find an example of this one. Uh, if you look in some facets of the uh, internet there and they're pouring cola on a piece of uh, pork chop or something like that, and right, and the little, whatever, uh, parasites and that kind of thing are trying to get away from the cola and escaping from the meat. So anyway, all right, uh, we got seven. And what's the perfect number seven? Water is especially distilled water that hadn't been tampered with. That comes in as a perfect number seven. Notice, uh, you see that little red blood cell? That's important for this series. Notice that that is above seven. So the normal state of blood is what? Acidic or alkali? Alkali. Right, we're gonna get to that in a minute. And baking soda here. A uh, quick tidbit on baking soda. Some people, in order to settle their stomach acid, they take baking soda because baking soda is made out of sodium bicarbonate. What does bicarbonate do? It helps to neutralize acid. So some people will take a teaspoon or so of uh, baking soda to settle their stomach sometimes. But you got to watch out for that because you could overdo that real quick, okay? And notice that ammonia is here. And uh, also up in here would be hair products that have lye in them. 
and help to uh, you know straighten out hair and things like that. So some ladies, when they're using those products, uh, and they can attest to it. it it starts to kind of burn their scalp. Why? Because anything too far this way, what? Burns. Anything too far this way, what? Burns. So, the safest area is right here in the middle, the water. Pretty harmless. But on both ends, can cause burning. Alright, pH, or ABG interpretation, uses blood pH as the normal range. Okay, so, we were just looking at this previous slide, which had, <laughs> my bad there, which had what? The blood was slightly higher than the water. This is your 7.35 to 7.45. So let's look at that again. 7.35 to 7.45. Slightly more alkaline than water, right? That's our reference range when we're doing this ABG interpretation. Put that in your mind and hang on to it. Okay. Revisiting our magical numbers from the first video. Just a quick breakdown to let you know how the important these are. Because they keep coming up, as I said. So we got three, four, five, and seven, and what? Three, four, five, and seven. Again, we're going to see these a lot. So, all right. As we said, our range for blood, 7.35 to 7.45, and... If it's less than 7.35, we're going to consider that acidic when we're talking about blood this time, right? And if it's higher than 7.45, we're going to call that alkaline or base or basic, okay? Good. Moving on. Metabolic. A uh, real quick breakdown about metabolic and metabolism. And this will serve you well because it helps break down that, that whole concept. When you're talking about metabolism, there's two aspects of it. One is the breakdown of things, and the other is the building up of things. And what I want to do is teach you this using a cat and its owner named Anna. So, the cat walks past the bowl, a glass bowl on the mantle, knocks that bowl over. What happens to that glass bowl? It hits the floor, it shatters, breaks into pieces. But that was what? Cat and the bowl. Catabolism is the breakdown of things in the body, all right? Anna, though, Anna's the owner of the cat. And what does she do? See that the cat broke the bowl? She puts the bowl back together. What does she do? Glue it and build it back up. So anabol, anabolism is the buildup of things. So catabolism, breakdown. Anabolism, what? Build back up, put it back together. Great. For our purposes, breaking down the substance in the body, catabolism, we're referring to liquid CO2. Now bicarbonate, what I want to point out to you is that bicarbonate has CO2 in it naturally. HCO3, bicarbonate. HCO2 plus one more oxygen would be what bicarb is made out of. So bicarb naturally has CO2 in it. And we said bicarb, how old are people when they normally buy a car? Typically, right, 22 to 26 years old. 22 to 26 for our bicarb range. Respiratory. This time we're talking about CO2 in a gas state. The gaseous version of CO2. And this, now, let's use our study, study smart strategy here. Where we just said that the range for blood was 7.35 to 7.45. And let's see if you see it, right? 7. Point what? 3.5 to 7.45. So it's the same numbers, just minus the 7 point in each case. Good. Study smart. Rome. This is it. Now you've got to know this. You absolutely have to know this. If you're in nursing school, medical school, studying to be a PCT, whatever, you want to know Rome when it comes to ABG interpretation. All right. And what does that stand for? respiratory like we were just talking about and then metabolic we were just talking about but now respiratory opposite that means as we start doing our exercises the arrows are pointing in opposite directions and metabolic what equal that's when the arrows are pointing in the same direction so let's take a look at it so i put this together to help you out so right 
if our arrows are pointing in opposite directions, we're talking about a respiratory issue, no matter how they're facing, they're not facing in the same direction, respiratory. But if they're pointing in the same direction, it's what? A metabolic issue. Great. So let's try that out. Here comes a sample. All right, now, I want you to prepare to pause this video and go ahead and complete this exercise. So go ahead and pause it and complete this exercise if you can do it. If you can't, you're in luck, <laughs> okay? If you can't do it, don't worry about it. And by the end of this video, you will know what you are doing. And, and hey, here it is right? You should never miss these. Never, ever, ever, ever. Don't ever miss these. Don't ever miss dosage calculation. You can't afford to. You need all your points in school, right? And you need to get your nurse's license. So when this thing pops up on the exam, you should go, hallelujah, here come the free points, right? Easy breezy. Here we go. So now, let's start with this guy here. This 7.28. And as we're looking at that, and we compare it to this range, and what? It's less than 7.35. Since it's less than 7.35, we're going to give that a down arrow. All right? There's our down arrow. Great. Now let's look at this 15 here. And with that one, in terms of this range, if we compare, 15 is what? Less than 22. So that one also gets a down arrow, all right? Now the 35, the th I'm sorry, 37. <laughs> it's been time. Let's see. 35 to uh, 45 is our reference range, and 37 fits where? Right in there. So that one doesn't get an arrow this time. No arrow. Okay, but then, let's look back. We would call this acidic or alkali. Right, we call this acidic. And since the arrows are pointing in the same direction, are we calling this respiratory or metabolic? They're pointing in the same direction, so we're calling this metabolic, and it's also acidic, so it's metabolic what? Acidosis. Fantastic. So let's put this over here. We got that one right already. Metabolic acidosis. Super. All right, now, let's go to the next one. 7.26. 7.26, that would be less than 7.35. So that one gets our down arrow. Let's put that there. And 24. 24 falls right in our range. So that gets no arrow. But 55 is higher than 45. So that gets our up arrow. All right. Let's move that over there. 55. Paste. Okay. So now, we know that we're dealing with something acidic, but our arrows are pointing in opposite directions. I mean, we said in Rome, that was what? Respiratory opposite. So it's respiratory what? Acidosis. Excellent. Right? Not bad. This, this stuff is not hard. People make it harder than it should be. It is super, super easy. Like I said, three points. Okay? Now, 7.56. 7.56 is higher than 7.45. So here comes our up arrow, right? Let's move that guy there. And 33. Well, 33 is higher than 26. So that gets an up arrow. How about 39 compared to 35 and 45? fits right in there. So no arrow on that. So wait a minute. Respiratory opposite metabolic equal. Arrows pointing in the equal direction. So it's metabolic. And this is alkalosis. So metabolic alkalosis this time. You getting it? <laughs> All right. Good stuff. All right. Let's move this one. Now, we're left with respiratory alkalosis. However, what we want to do is prove it. So, 7.67 greater than 7.45 going to get what kind of arrow? You guessed it. An up arrow. Alright. 
and 26. Well, that doesn't get an arrow because it's still within the range. So we're going to leave that one alone. But then how about this 27 here? That's less than our 35 up here. So this one gets a down arrow. That's right. And if we put a down arrow there, and we knew that we were talking about some type of alkalosis. Our arrows are pointing in opposite directions. Respiratory opposite. Respiratory alkalosis. Right. As I said, super easy. I mean, you want to you wanna lock this concept in your mind. If you didn't get it the first time, you can always, uh, you know, hit repeat on this video real quick. Got to know it when it comes test time. Have to know it for nurses for med surge, right? All right. Well, hey, thank you guys for joining us again. See you in the next episode. Good job.